Good morning and welcome. Happy New Year uh, to you all. And uh, we know this is not the format that we'd all like to uh, have this morning, but we welcome you to uh, the Lord's house, wherever that you're at. And we know that the Lord is with us and we are the church, no matter where we are at. My name is Jim Schmidt, and I am filling in for uh, Pastor John Fillmore uh, today, and I just want to take uh, just a moment to do a little housekeeping with some different information uh, this morning. Uh, again, we thank you for uh, tuning in, taking a, a little bit of your morning uh, to uh, share and uh, to be a part of our church, no matter where we're at. So John and Tasha are uh, recovering at home and uh, they give their best. And of course, we all wish we could be gathered together. Um, and we hope to be able to do that, uh, hopefully, uh, the following week, the week of the 10th. Uh, but we will keep everyone posted on that. But we welcome everybody here this morning. It was not an easy decision just to take a couple minutes for the leadership to, to um, cancel our in-person time at the church. But uh, leadership felt it was very important to do so. Um, there's the importance of um, trying to be safe for everyone. We sure don't want others getting sick or having complications. Um, and uh, so uh, the leadership took it very seriously to make this decision uh, to not meet in person today. Uh, but as I said earlier, we hope to be able to do that uh, again uh, the week of the 10th. But we welcome you here uh, this morning. So our, our format this morning will be me uh, just sharing with you all for, for just a little bit. And uh, we'll have some scripture, we'll have time of prayer, uh, and I'll have a few words uh, for you this morning that I hope are helpful as we start our new year uh, together. Another important, an important part of uh, uh, our message as we get started on this online version this morning is just to remind people that our our church and our leaders uh, are not fearful, uh, but they are just cautious. And uh, we want to be practicing just some health, uh, healthy um, ways to worship, uh, as I mentioned before, so that um, all of us can stay safer, uh, not to live in fear, but just to practice a little precautions um, uh, so to keep everyone as safe as we can. So again, we thank you for your patience and, and your time uh, this morning. I just want to say a quick and big thank you to Matt Pasco for helping out, uh, getting me set up in the, in the sense of uh, getting this uploaded so that all of you can watch uh, this um, this morning. So thank you, Matt. Um, as always, with our Mark and Matt and our IT crew in the back, we thank you for all that you do for us um, each and every week. So with that said, I'd like to start our time together today uh, with a word of prayer as uh, we start uh, our time together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this time, no matter where we're at, no matter what condition or, um, that we are in. Lord, we know that uh, your church is all of us. Lord, we pray for John and Tasha as they recover uh, from COVID this morning, that you would just grant them a special healing and covering and blessing today and help them to recover quickly and fully and to be able to get back to all of us. And we know that that's where their hearts are. So Lord, we pray for them today. We pray for our time together today. Lord, may you be glorified in all that we do and all that we say. Lord, I just pray your guidance today. We pray these things. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to start with our Old Testament reading this morning. I'm going to be jumping back and forth with a couple of things. Uh, so hopefully it's not too disjointed with uh, me talking and grabbing a, a book here and there uh, this morning. But I'll be reading from uh, Lamentations, the third chapter, verses 1 through 26 this morning. I am the man who has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely has turned his hand against me time and time again throughout the day. He has aged my flesh and my skin and broken my bones. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. He has set me in dark places like the dead of long ago. 
He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. He has been to me a bear lying in wait like a lion in ambush. He has turned aside my ways and torn me into pieces. He has made me so desolate. He has bent his bow and set me up as a target for the arrow. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. I have become the ridicule of my people, their taunting song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drink wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. You have moved my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my roaming, the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and thinks and sinks within me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They have new morning, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope with him and in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So these are lamentations of Jeremiah, a little bit of a downer as the first part of that reading goes. But the context of this, the lamentations of Jeremiah, is that this he was lamenting over the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 587 BC. As I think of all that we've gone through, and we'll mention this a few times uh, today, is uh, in 2020, um, but I think if we put things in perspective and think of Jeremiah and what he went through, and just by the reading itself, we see the pain and anguish uh, that he had. Perspective and our own problems and how we see things is always so important. From the New Testament, I would like to read to you from the Gospel of John, first chapter. Verses 29 through 51. That's First John, excuse me, John, the gospel, chapter 1, starting at verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is prepared before me. He was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained on him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The, the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, he said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, and translated, teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. One of the two heard Jesus speak, 
and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and he said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. When Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah, you shall be called Cephas, which is translated a, a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and all the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come up of Nazareth? Philip said it to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, and he said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. May the Lord add his blessings to the scripture this morning. <clears throat> Well, we have made it through 2020. Everything is back to normal. There is no other problems to be had just because the calendar rolled over to another year. We wish that was true. I think many of us wish that was very true and that our lives could get back to some kind of normal. As each year, probably many of us have New Year's resolutions some of you go through this and some of you don't, and sometimes we don't call them resolutions. We Maybe we call them goals or uh, other things that we're going to work on throughout the year. What's interesting is that each year we kind of start off and have this feeling that uh, it's a new clean slate as the calendar rolls around and we start fresh and new. We know that 2020, 2021, we'll already be starting with some new challenges and some leftovers from 2020. The slate may not be as clean as we had hoped from 2020 moving into this year, which brings some new challenges for us all. I have two quotes I'd like to share with you today. One from Charles Beard, and he said, when it is dark enough, you can see the stars. And from Robert Alden, there's not enough darkness in all of the world to put out the light of even one small candle. The Gospel of John's reading today, very interesting. And one thing I did find interesting uh, as looking at some of the scriptures uh, for uh, today, just coming out of the Christmas season, out of the Gospels, two of the Gospels have the, the birth account of Jesus, two of the four. But in all four uh, of the Gospels, we have uh, different accounts uh, of the starting or the the. Um, uh, calling of, of the disciples. So in all four of the Gospels, we actually have discussions and the account of Jesus calling the disciples. One of the things I remember very clearly, a fellow who used to work with me, and we had morning prayer uh, at our office, and how he would pray often is he would say this, let us be God's hands and feet extended to the world. I've always remembered that and I've incorporated that partly into my own 
prayers and, and thinking as we think of us being God's hands and feet extended to the world. We should never discount the importance of our own story, our own witness to our community and even to the world. When we think of the word disciples or apostles as the word that I will use today, in the Greek it means one who is sent out. An apostle is a personal messenger or envoy, uh, envoy excuse me, commissioned to transmit the message or otherwise carry out the instructions of the commissioning agent. Jesus was his father's apostle. So he was the first. The original 12 apostles or disciples were Jesus as apostles, and Jesus was the agent sending them out. And now I think it's always important for us to remember that we too, even separated by 2,000 years, are Jesus' apostles. We are his messengers sent out into the world to share the good news that he is the Son of God. In today's broken condition of relationships brought on by just a myriad of things this past year of of illness and separation and isolation and people in facilities not getting to see their families. Um, just the list goes on and on, the civil unrest and just the many relationship um, destruction that we have seen uh, this past year. Are we still the light? Are we still acting like messengers for Jesus? during this time. We need to be that reflection of God's light to the world, especially now. Our age, our health condition, our situ financial situation, whatever it might be, our color, our race, our nationality, all of these things don't matter in the sense of how and really that we need to be uh, God's messengers. In fact, these, these types of differences um, make us uniquely equipped to be able to minister in the way that God wants us to be sent out and to minister to people that we, that we need to be ministering to, even if we don't know that yet. We're uniquely equipped just because we are unique. I love the account of Nathaniel in this reading from John and how he responded uh, to Jesus. He, like many of us, was wondering, who is this person? And as I back up just a little bit before the story of Nathaniel... them asking and wondering where Jesus is going to be. And he says to them, what do you seek? And he said, my phone turned off, didn't anticipate for that. <laughs> um, he asked his disciples, well, what are you seeking? What do you seek? And they say, well, where are you staying? And Jesus' answer uh, is a unique one, as we see many times on the way that Jesus responds to us and our disciples. Excuse me, to uh, the way that he responded to his disciples. Sorry about the distraction there. <laughs> and that is in a way he says, he says, come and see. Come and see. And then later, as he's talking to uh, Nathaniel, Nathaniel is, a, is a, amazed by the way that um, Jesus speaks to him. He says, I saw you 
standing by the fig tree. And because he said that, Nathanael believed. And Jesus' response, once again, is great. And he says, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. The original 12 had so many questions, like all of us. They had so many questions for Jesus. They didn't fully get it, like us. However, they were ready to serve, and they were ready to be used for God's kingdom. Go back and look at the other accounts. I encourage you uh, in the Gospels of Jesus calling out his disciples and how they left what they were doing to follow. They left no matter what the cost was. They left what they were doing to follow Jesus. What about us in this new year as we start up and we start uh, moving forward with the year 2021? Are we ready to say, I don't know what this year is going to bring, Lord? I just don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know if it's going to be much better or, or what's going to happen this year. But send me. I feel at times that we all say to ourselves, I don't have anything to offer, or I'm, I'm too old, or I can't, I can't be used like I used to be anymore, or, or the situation is not right right now. It's, it's just too hard, and we have a myriad of excuses and things that we say of why we feel we can't be used by God. Think again about uh, the chapter uh, that I read from Lamentations, Jeremiah's Lament. As we get down through these, these his, his just grieving, this, this, these dirges of, of how he is just mourning the loss of Jerusalem and the temple. As, as we get down to verse 22 of the third chapter, we have... This, these encouraging uh, words uh, through all of those difficult times, we also then have Jeremiah saying, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. I think many of us had to come to those, to this, hopefully those uh, conclusions uh, in the year 2020 that, um, oh Lord, your, your mercies, they fail not. We have, we have made it through uh, this portion of a very difficult season, not knowing how long this next season is going to be. And it's not just because the calendar flips over, as I said earlier, that uh, everything is going to be great and fine once again. But if we can come and say, Lord, I'm going to let you be in charge and I want to be used I want to be your hands and feet extended uh, to the world. Then we can be like Jeremiah and claim and say, through, Lord's, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. 2020 may have felt pretty bad for a lot of us. And we can look back at our country and our world and see a lot of negative things that have happened. And it can feel like I heard so many, as maybe probably you did as well, as we were getting closer to the end of 2020, thinking, oh boy, I'll sure be glad when this year is over. It's been so difficult, so hard. I know for us and our family, we had some challenges of things and the ministry that I had provided as a chaplain with hospice, it was it definitely had some challenges this year with, with COVID and the way I was able to provide ministry and in, in or, or not provide ministry in some cases and facilities that we couldn't get into because of the, the lockdowns. But I know for one great example of 2020 of why we felt that 2020 is not a it's not a complete loss, like we can just write it off. You know, my middle child, Skylar, who grew up in this church as well. Him and his wife, Cassie, got married. 
this year. Uh, very special. So 2020, in that sense for us, has special meaning and that, that, it was, that it was good. Yes, there's challenges. Yes, there were things that were difficult. Um, but ourselves, as all of you, if you reflect back oh, over this past year, I think we can all say and, and, and see things uh, that were good and how God was still good to us. Even like Jeremiah in his, in his lament, there was so much pain that he was having, but nonetheless, God is so good. Now, 2021 may or not be the best either. We don't know. There's lots of unknowns and uh, question marks moving forward. The, the new vaccine that's, that's just now uh, getting administered to healthcare workers and people in facilities. So there's lots of unknowns there too. And I think regardless of where any of us stand in any of this, uh, of 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 what we think about the vaccine or what we think about COVID, I, I think we as Christians, as believers, have to be able to park some of that and say, okay, Lord, through all of this, how can I still minister? How can I still be your messenger, your apostle, the one, you know, those of us being sent out for to the betterment of your kingdom, that we have to be able to park and set aside some of these unknowns and say, Lord, no matter what's happening, please send me equip me to be out there and to share the good news that you are still in the business of love and compassion. And again, his compassions fail not. And in our weakness, he is strong. One of our chaplains uh, told me here just a couple of weeks ago, I like the way he put it, we were talking about difficult times and how people are having uh, so much stress and anxiety and different things going on. And he says, you know, a uh, little phrase, a little, little blurb is that uh, at the end of our ropes or at the end of our rope is God's address. That's where we find Jesus. And it's important for us to remember that during these, these trying and, and strange and uh, uh, challenging times that God is, is, he is there more than ever. He has not left us. He has not forsaken us. So what is our perspective? What is your perspective as we move into 2021? How are you feeling that you are still a tool of God? Do we need to shake off that rust, like getting the old hammer out of the, the toolbox and getting it, uh, getting it out ready to use? I think that that's kind of like us. You know, sometimes we have to say in this new, uh, new season as we move into 2021 that, Lord, help to shake the rust off, the dust off, and help me to move forward with being your agent, your apostle. What if we find out at some point that 2020, as I was thinking about this question, moving forward years from now, what will we learn about 2020? What will we understand about it? What will, will we find out possibly that in the year 2020, more people accepted Christ than ever before? Won't it all be worth it at that point? Won't we be able to look back and say, oh boy, it was so difficult. It was the strangest thing any of us have ever gone through. But look how many people came to the Lord. And that is a huge um, kudos uh, to our response, not giving ourselves credit, glory to God always, and the way that we just give God the glory. But if we can look back and say, it was a time that we grew stronger, it was a time that we drew closer to the Lord, it would have all been worth it. How will we view 2020 then if we come to know the great new things and the way lives were changed uh, for Christ? Again, as a reminder, Jesus in, in uh, John, in the scripture that we're reading this morning, asked by his two disciples, where are you staying? I love his response, and it's come and see. When the questions and the doubts of our troubled world have us wondering where Jesus is and why things are going the way that they are, 
I feel that Jesus is reminding us to listen and to obey, to obey his call to come and see where he's at because he is there. We will never be disappointed with what we find with Jesus. We will never be disappointed. I have a small devotion from William Barclay that, that I thought was fitting, and it is for January 1st is his first one in his, his book here, The Daily Celebration from William Barclay, January 1, and he entitles his devotion, Get Cracking. I was cleaning my car in the street at my front door using one of these amazing brush, brushes which, left, uh, which would lift off the dust, just like magic. A very small girl came up and she was watching me. My daddy's got one of these brushes to clean his car too, she said. That's very nice, I replied. And with a view to making conversation, I added, and what kind of car does your daddy have? Oh, said the girl, he hasn't gotten the car yet, but he's got the brush to clean it. If you can't get all you want, Start with what you can get. If you can't achieve the big things of your dream, get cracking on what you are able to do. As we move into 2020, just a few closing thoughts uh, this morning. Really, it's not about how good our lives are. And we know in this past year, it has been very difficult in many different ways, in many different layers. But if we start thinking in perspective, it's not about how good our lives are that are important to us and how easy that they can be. It's about what good we are willing and able to show the troubled world and where that source comes from and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. All that is good comes from him. Lamentations reminds us, Jeremiah so, so eloquently put, that there are new mercies every day. As we move forward into 2021, hoping that uh, things will get different and things will get back to some kind of normal, Help us be listening for the words that Christ speaks to us. Come and see. Come and see where Christ is at. Are we willing to meet him there? And not only meet him there, but to tell others of where he is at so that they can go and see as well. Christ is ready for us to make that move and to come and see him. Are we ready for that move in our lives? Please join me in a closing prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this time this morning. As strange as it might be and that we have to meet this way today, Lord, we just know that you are with us, that you love us, and that you are a part of our lives. If we only open ourselves to you on a daily basis. And we pray that this new year in 2021, that we will have new commitments, new opportunities for, for you and growing closer to you and to telling others about how you make a difference in our lives. I pray for this faith community today. Be with them and all that they do. Lord, be with us as your people. Strengthen us, guide us, that we may find strength in you, and to be able to show others this wonderful message, this wonderful good news, the celebration that we have just had of your, your Christ son, your Christ child being born, born for us. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you all and all that you do today. Blessings to you.